Hey everyone, Larry here again today to share with you a food recipe, an update of a previous recipe, or actually recipes. I've done this a, <laughs> a number of times. I actually lost count. It's on Chicago Italian beef sandwiches because I live in the Chicagoland area. I've grown up. Italian beef were one of my favorite dishes growing up as a kid. And I've been on this uh, quest and pursuit to make the perfect uh, Italian beef sandwich over the years. Not quite 100% there yet because uh, as you can see, uh, well, I'll show you some overlay here, but I've done it rotisserie style. I've done it sous vide style. I've done it traditional in the oven, I do it in the Dutch oven, a Dutch oven on the grill. I've done a whole variety of ways. I've used dry spices, uh, fresh herbs instead of dry spices, using different ingredients along the way. Well, today is another variation of all of this. And because it's early August here in the Chicagoland area, I have a whole bunch of fresh herbs on hand. I got the rosemary, thyme, basil, oregano. I got peppers galore. So I figured I'd take advantage of some of my own local produce or herbs, my fresh herbs this time to, to make this version. So if you have some fresh herbs on hand and want to see how I do this version of the recipe, stick around and I'll walk you through it. Right off the bat, the meat. Well, I usually get some kind of uh, round eye roast or uh, top sirloin roast. Sometimes you can uh, do chuck roast, which I've done a number of times, excellent results with a chuck roast. But in this video, I'm using a round eye roast and I dry brine it first for several hours, preferably overnight. And the next day, I gather a handful of various herbs that you can see. I got the rosemary, I got the basil, oregano, and even a little thyme. Some chopped garlic, some diced up onion, in this case a red onion. And because I've got peppers in my garden, I picked a Fresno pepper. It's not normally one of the things I put in this, but I have them, so let's use them. So with everything minced up, I go ahead and add some olive oil to make it into a paste. Add a little bit of black pepper to the mix too. And I smear all over the roast put it on the drip and griddle roasting rack and put it on my SNS Kamado on the indirect side. I started off at around a 230 something degree temperature, uh, but eventually over the course of the time it cooked, I let it creep up to well over 300 degrees because I wanted a little bit more browning than I was getting from the lower temperature. In hindsight, I'd probably just go ahead and go for the 300 plus degrees right out of the gate, but a little experimentation here. So this is what I got. A couple hours later, I was up to uh, the temperature I wanted, which was uh, close to about 140. You pull it off a little bit earlier, about 135 or so, it, it'll continue to rise. Uh, it'll continue to heat and get up to those extra few more degrees, about 140, but that's what I did. After I removed the roast from the grill, I wrapped it in some plastic wrap and threw it in the fridge overnight to cool. You want it to cool down because if you're gonna be using a slicer, you want a nice firm cold cut of meat. So when you run the, the slicer through it, it doesn't, uh, give you any problems and they'll let you cut very thin slices. The following day is when you then unwrap the plastic wrap and slice it up for, for sandwiches. So it's not a meal that you eat the same day as you make it. You have to chill it overnight, firm it up so you can slice it. So therefore you're eating the meal the following day, not that same day. And I have a little slicer here that I use, um, a little hand-me-down one that works well enough. I can get relatively thin slices out of this thing. Then came the juice, and they call it juice. It's just really like a beef broth, but what I did is collect the pan drippings from the dripping griddle pan from the roast, added them into a few cups worth of beef broth. I've actually used this thing called Better Than Bouillon, which I think is better flavor. And this time for the peppers, uh, rather than using jardiner, which is what I traditionally would do, uh, because I have all these garden peppers in my uh, yard, my, on my pots and in my garden, I decided to use those peppers. Now, the peppers I use in this are a combination of peppers this time. I use some Melrose peppers, which are the traditional Italian uh, favorite for uh, sweet peppers here in the Chicagoland area. The restaurants really don't serve these. These are actually more like locally grown in backyards around the Chicagoland area. The Melrose peppers named after Melrose Park, which is a suburb of Chicago, by the way. And they're a sweet frying pepper. Those were really great, great. So that's what I did. I fried them up along with a couple other peppers that I had on hand for a little bit more heat. So a little bit of a sweet heat. Then I was ready to make the sandwich. I went ahead and put my uh, roll down. Now I use Toronto brand rolls because for one, that's one of the two common types around Chicagoland are the Ganella and the Toronto brand rolls. The Toronto are easily available for us. The Ganella is a little harder to find. It's more restaurants tend to get their hands on those first rather than us consumers. So, the, but the Toronto is a good second guess or a second choice. Then you open up the bun, you put some, uh, some of the juice on there, get it nice and wet, layer on some meat and some peppers and some cheeses. And there you go, instant sandwich. Uh, not, not the best looking for a food video, right? But uh, you get the point nonetheless. I 
you only used half the roast for the family meal, had some leftovers even for the following day, the other half the roast, I do what I normally do. I'll vacuum seal it, freeze it, along with half the, uh, with half the juice as well in a ball of jar and put it in the freezer for a future meal. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Comment if you like below, ask any questions. I put the uh, whole recipe in the video description down below. Again, it's sort of a rough uh, order of magnitude, a handful of this, a pinch of that. If you like that kind of recipe, go on in there and get it uh, from my video description. And uh, otherwise, I'll talk to you all next time.